In Genesis 24, we'll begin reading verse 61. The Bible says, And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon camels, and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lahoiroi, uh, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at evening tide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, for she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for the good singing, the good choir singing. Lord, we're thankful for a good Sunday school hour and the wonderful news of the lady who got saved over at the jail. We sure do appreciate that open door and those of our church family that are faithful to go every Sunday and preach the gospel. And God, we're thankful for that. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd help us, you'd put a hedge about us. Lord, uh, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. And we too pray, if there be any amongst us today who are unsaved, lost without God, that today would be the day of salvation. I pray for your children, Lord, that you would strengthen them. Lord, you know what your children have faced this past week. You know what they'll face in the week ahead. Lord, uh, there are many that are here that, Lord, have faced great adversity. And there are some who are tired in body. There are some who are weak. There are some uh, 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 who just need a touch from God. There are some who need help. There are some who are seeking answers. Uh, Father, there are some that just uh, are longing to see you high and lifted up. So, Father, I pray that none would be disappointed this morning and they would see the Master uh, step out on the bow of the ship, say, Peace be still to their life, and do something uh, for each and every one of us. Send revival these days. Uh, help these churches have a revival meeting. Bless them and help them. Be my preacher friends that are preaching today. Father, use them mightily. Be with the sick and help them and touch them. Be with uh, Brother Thad and Miss Tammy. Be with Sister May. God, be with those that are uh, not feeling well. Be with those that are recovering from surgeries. I pray for Brother Jack's nephew. I pray for Miss Sheila's brother. You touch them. Uh, Lord, I pray for Ambassador Baptist Church this morning, Lord, uh, as Miss Claudia went out to meet the Lord. Uh, 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 and Father, I pray for AJ there, Lord. He's lost his mother. And God, I pray that God... You'd bless that church as, Lord, they've lost a dear uh, uh, member this morning. Now, Father, uh, bless as only you can. Use this unworthy vessel and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to uh, 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 bring out a few things. The first thing I'd like for you to understand in this entire chapter, there's a wonderful picture uh, 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 you see in this chapter, uh, Abraham is concerned about his boy Isaac. Uh, and Abraham sends a servant uh, uh, to the land of their fathers to find Isaac a bride. Uh, now, how would you like that, fellas? Uh, you don't even get to pick her out. Don't even get to see if she's pretty. Don't even get to... Uh, uh, you depending on your dad uh, uh, to send Owen to get you a bride. Uh, you'd be in a mess. You know that, don't you? Huh? Uh, he'd find somebody that likes dinosaurs and, and likes to eat wherever he likes to eat. You'd be in trouble, wouldn't you, huh? But hey, uh, that's what he did. Now, the servant, that's a great responsibility on him. Uh, if he doesn't bring the right bride back to the master's son, uh, 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 it won't bode well for him. Uh, so he's awful concerned. Uh, and uh, while he gets out there, Brother Phil, uh, 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 he begins to pray and ask God, uh, uh, God, if uh, she's the one for the master, help her, have her to come out, uh, have her to lap water up a certain way, uh, and Father, uh, uh, have her to give water to the 
the camels uh, and he's sitting on a well and here comes Rebecca uh, and she did exactly what uh, uh, the servant had prayed for uh, and he knew she was the right one. Uh, he gives her an earring, gives her some jewels and some gold uh, and goes, uh, gives her brother and her mama some uh, uh, dowry and uh, they uh, begin to uh, get on the camels and come to meet Isaac. Uh, now the picture uh, is a wonderful picture. Abraham's a picture of the father. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, Isaac's a picture of the Lord Jesus. Uh, hey, the servant's a picture of the Holy Ghost. Uh, hey, and Rebecca's a picture of the bride of Christ. Uh, and aren't you glad the Holy Ghost was dispatched, the comforter was sent, uh, and he's seeking a bride, uh, and he's coming. Uh, hey, and he comes by the well of the Word of God, uh, and he begins to speak to hearts. Uh, and when we do uh, what he says. Uh, hey, what a blessing. We're put into the family of God uh, and we're betrothed to the Lord Jesus. Uh, there's a wonderful picture uh, in this wonderful chapter. Uh, but I want you to also know there were promises made. You see, the servant told her, said, uh, Here's some jewels, and here's some gold, and here's some raiment, uh, and here's some for your family. Uh, 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 but this is nothing compared to what my master has. This is just a small installment uh, to what's over on the other side. Uh, there were some promises made. Uh, 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 and uh, she said, how will you know your master's son will love me? He said, oh, trust me. Uh, he already loves you. You don't even know it. Uh, and friends, I've got news. Uh, uh, the day you got saved, uh, you just got the installment. Uh, hey, we got the earnest of the Spirit. Uh, but there's plenty more over on the other side. Uh, Hey, and I got good news, Brother Ray. You don't have to worry about whether or not he loves you. Uh, he's loved you with an everlasting love. Uh, and what a blessing to have that hope today. Uh, mm, there's a wonderful picture. There's some promises uh, made. But can I say, uh, there's also some prevailing in the journey. Now, here's Rebecca. She's never met this servant, but instantly she knew that he was sin of God. And all of his words sounded wonderful. And everything just was what she'd hoped and prayed for. And so the day comes, and it's time to go. So she gets on a camel. Not my favorite mode of transportation. And she starts on a journey. Now, Brother Bob, she don't know how long she's going to be on that camel, how long it's going to take to get there, uh, how long it's going to take to uh, see Isaac. Uh, 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 and she's traveling through a desert. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. Now, I've not been to many desert regions. My pigmentation isn't built for desert. My taste in climate isn't built for desert. And deserts have snakes. <laughs> but she's traveling through a desert. Deserts are hot. They're dry. They're cold at night. Uh, there's nothing beautiful to see. Uh, the wind gets blowing and all you get is sand in the face. Uh, I mean, it is a terrible climate. It's a terrible journey. And can I say I can just envision they're headed out and they're going down through this desert and they're on these camels and these camels are nasty smelly animals and all of a sudden the servant looks back and Rebecca's got that look on her face she's wondering is this worth it and she may have even, Brother Brian, Miss Doreen, got to missing Mama. Got to missing what she knew. Because all she's got is a promise. She don't know what's up ahead. She's getting that weary and well-doing look in her, in her eyes. Uh, and, and you see, uh, uh, look with me down, down there about verse 53. This was before they left. This is what the servant done for her mom and her uncle. 
said, And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment uh, and gave them uh, to Rebekah. And that servant looks back and he sees that wearied look uh, and that worried look uh, and he looks back at her uh, and she's got doubt uh, and she's got discouragement uh, and, and all of a sudden he slows his camel up uh, and he pulls up right beside her uh, and he opens up that bag uh, and he reaches in and he shows her another handful of jewels uh, and he says, look, uh, this is nothing compared to what is waiting on you. Uh, and friend, there are there are times when our journey gets a little rough. Uh, uh, there are times we get a little weary. Uh, there are times where uh, I, I have to wonder. Uh, uh, there are times where uh, I'm thinking, uh, uh, oh, how much longer? Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, the sweet Holy Ghost will come by your way uh, and he'll throw some handfuls of purpose on you. Uh, he'll give you a verse that you hadn't really uh, studied before. Uh, he'll give you peace you didn't know existed. Uh, He'll let you get into service uh, where it gets out of the banks uh, and all of a sudden you realize it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, and you just want to continue on in the journey. There's peril and prevailing in the journey. But then, my dear friends, there's the pinnacle of jubilation at journey's end. Amen. She looks up, she sees him. And he sees her. Mm, she lights off the camel. She had no more use for that thing anymore. And she runs to the arms of Isaac. Uh, and he takes her and makes her his own. Uh, and uh, uh, they dwell together forevermore. Uh, and neighbor, I'm uh, telling you, uh, uh, there's coming a day. Uh, hey, uh, we will lay off this corruptible and put on incorruption. Uh, hey, there's coming a day uh, when we'll see him as he is. Uh, there's coming a day uh, we will fall in his arms uh, and we'll dwell with him forevermore. Uh, oh, what a day, neighbor, that'll be. Hey, this isn't in my message, but I read this this week. Brother Jenton brought it out in my Sunday school class. You might not have heard this, but this week they shipped from Texas some red heifers to Israel. These red heifers are without blemish. These red heifers are going to the temple mm, where Old Testament worship's about ready to be reestablished. Uh, there's been a great migration for the last uh, a few years of Jews going back to Israel. Uh, now that may not mean much to you sitting here in Florence, Kentucky today, uh, but if you study the Bible, uh, after the church is resurrected out of here, uh, uh, they're going to start offering up the ashes of a red heifer again uh, over there. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, neighbor, uh, uh, we're almost home. Uh, this thing's almost over. Uh, if you're not in, you better get in. Uh, hey, the journey's about to, uh, to end. Uh, now I want to draw your attention to verse 61. Look what it says. And Rebekah rose and her damsels, and they rode upon camels. You see that? Look with me down there, verse 63. And the camels were coming. Huh? Now, can I say this, that these caravans, they would call them the ship of the desert. These caravans, when they'd rise on them sand dunes and go down them sand dunes and rise on them sand dunes and go down, they said it looked like a ship being tossed on the waves of the sea. Uh and so, for all intents and purposes, this picture also shows a ship. And with that in mind, I'm going to preach on the captain of the ship of Zion. The captain of the ship of Zion. My dear friends, uh, there's several places in the scriptures and Throughout the church age, uh, the church has been likened unto the ship of Zion. My dear friends, we've been on a, 
sail uh, since you got on board uh, uh, to the homeland. Uh, can I say Hebrews chapter 6 tells us uh, that the anchor's already been within the veil, dropped in glory, uh, and the anchor's tied to the ship. Uh, and it's just wheeling us on in. Uh, and one day, uh, we're going to arrive at port uh, and we're going to be home with the Lord forevermore. Uh, but I've got good news. Uh, we've got a captain over this ship. Uh, hey, what a blessing uh, uh, that I know the captain today. Uh, oh, we got a captain uh, that certainly uh, knows how to pilot this ship. Uh, can I say, first of all, the captain... Uh, is the only Savior. Uh, if you're dependent on anybody else to get you to heaven, you're not going to make it. Uh, 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 it takes the captain of the ship of Zion uh, uh, to get you home. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 9, uh, but we see Jesus, uh, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, uh, crowned with glory and honor, uh, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, uh, for it became him, became him uh, for whom all things are, uh, and by whom are all things, uh, in bringing many sons unto glory, uh, to make the captain of their salvation uh, perfect through sufferings. Uh, he became our captain uh, when he bled and died on Calvary uh, and shed his blood for the propitiation of our sins. Uh, he was buried uh, and rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, and he took the stern uh, of the old ship of Zion. Uh, and for 2,000 years, uh, he's been pleading for sons of God be brought unto glory uh, uh, to get on board. Uh, and he's taken his ship to home. Uh, what a blessing. He's the only Savior. There's no other ship going to heaven. And you can't buy your way onto this ship. The fare's already been paid. Uh, he paid for it with his own blood. Uh, and friend, he invites all because he tasted death for every man. Uh, he invites all to get on board. Uh, my dear friends, uh, Moses for 120 years preached that it was going to rain and people thought he was crazy. But can I say, the ones that got on the ark made it to safety. It was only Noah and his sons and their daughters and his wife. Uh, uh, but I got news for you. And the old ship of Zion sailing and everybody can get on. Uh, but there's coming a day when God's going to shut the door and it'll be too late. Uh, but hey, I'd get on board if you're not on board today. You say, preacher, how do I get on board? You've got to put your faith in the captain. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, and the captain of the ship of Zion is the only Savior. Can I say this about the captain? He knows the sea. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, he knows the sea. Can I say he knows the currents? Mm -hmm. uh, can I say this? Uh, he knows the chances, the dangers. Mm -hmm. He knows where the water's too shallow. And he knows uh, where there's some currents that the ship can't uh, 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 handle and it'll break up the ship. He knows all the dangers, the chances. He knows the currents. Uh, 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 can I say this? Uh, he knows the creatures in the sea. Can I say there's mm, whales out there? You don't want to hit one of them. Uh, uh, there's other creatures out there. Mm, but there's one that the Bible calls Leviathan. Mm. You say, who's that creature? Well, he's, Leviathan is a picture of Satan. And he, he's walking about seeking whom he may devour, but he's certainly against the old ship of Zion. Uh, mm, but the captain knows right where he's at. And I got good news. The captain knows how to take care of him. He has every time they come up against each other. I gotta say, the captain is the only savior. The captain knows the sea, but the captain also foresees the storms. Uh, I was watching a documentary the other day. And it was a, a large cruise ship, and there was a hurricane coming right to where they were sailing. And it was amazing 
they had a radar system, a Doppler radar that they have here in Cincinnati, you know, where they never know the weather. <laughs> These guys knew the weather. Because they know if they run into a hurricane, it isn't going to be good. But he foresaw and knew what route to take to avoid the storm. Can I help you something about the captain of the ship of Zion? He knows the storms before they start to brew. And he knows what storms the ship can handle and what ones she can't. And friend, if he allows you to go through a storm, don't worry about it, the captain's got you. But if it's too big for you, hey, he knows how to get you around the storm because uh, he knows what you're able to bear uh, and he knows what you can't bear. Uh, he knows how much the ship can take uh, and how much she can't take. Uh, and by the way, uh, if Jesus is on board your vessel, your vessel will never sink. Uh, oh, what a blessing. The ship isn't going down, friend. She's a going up. Hallelujah. Huh? Uh, he's the only Savior. He knows the sea. He foresees the storms. But the captain, he also knows the ship. Mm -hmm. Can I say he knows the load of the ship? He knows what you're loaded with today. Mm. Uh. I'd like to say every time I come to church, I come to church ready to worship, but sometimes I'm loaded down. Amen. The captain knows that. Can I say this? He knows the limit of the ship, and he knows your limits. And the Lord who knows your load, and he knows your limits, he knows how to limit your loads. Because mm -hmm. he knows just how much pressure you can take. Now, sometimes we think we've had all we can have. Uh, we're like Popeye. I've stands all I can stands. I can't stands no more. But the Lord knows what you can really handle. A lot of times, like that song Miss Sidney sang in the choir, a lot of times we're stronger than we know we are. But he knows your limits. But can I say this? He also knows the layout of the ship. Hmm. Amen. There's no captain on any sailing vessel today that doesn't know every bit of that ship. And we can take refuge in that. Huh? You see, Brother Clint, he knows you. But he's not just consumed with you. He knows the whole layout. He knows the other Clint. And he knows Brother Josh. And he knows Miss Brittany. And he knows Brother Owen. And he knows Brother Joseph. And he knows everything about the ship, and he knows everything about you and I. Uh, what a captain. Uh, me, I only retain about a fraction of what I even hear. He knows it all. And by the way, he knows who's in this building today who's actually in the ship. And he knows who's not, because he's the captain. And he knows the ship. Mm. That same documentary, I was amazed at how much that captain knew about the ship. He'd only been sailing for 35 years. But he knew everything about that ship. Mm. That was his job. Because he's the captain. Something went wrong with the ship. They couldn't blame the first mate. Or they couldn't blame Gopher or Isaac. It's all on Captain Steubing. Kids Google that. It's called the Love Boat. That was uh, TV back in our days. Uh, I've seen some Gophers, but that's a whole other message. He knows the ship. Can I say something else about the captain? He supplies every need once you're on board everything supplied now that might not mean anything to you but there's a few of us in here that means a whole lot too because me and my family's getting on a cruise next week and can I say the moment I step on board that ship 
I can throw my wallet in the safe. I won't need it anymore. Everything's supplied. Hmm? Huh? Lobster supplied. <laughs> Steak supplied. Ice cream supplied. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all the food I can eat, all the food that Brother Ed could eat is supplied on this boat. Huh? Everything is supplied. I don't have to worry about anything. It's all supplied. Everything. Matter of fact, I, I pinned this down yesterday. This cruise ship I'm getting on, it stocked with 1,500 pounds of coffee. It's stocked with 9,700 pounds of chicken. It's stocked with 60,000 eggs. It's stocked with, hallelujah, 15,000 pounds of beef. It's stocked, hallelujah, praise the Lord, with 700 pounds of ice cream. It's stocked with 20,000 pounds of potatoes. It's stocked with 2,100 2, pounds of lobster tails. It's stocked with 2,500 pounds of salmon. It's stocked with 5,000 pounds of french fries. And it all comes together and being stocked with 5,300 pounds of bacon. Hallelujah, huh? Not counting the vegetables, not counting the fruit, not counting everything else. What I'm telling you, uh, hey, it's been appointed uh, that the Lord will supply all our needs through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, hey, uh, the day I got saved, I didn't know anything. Uh, I just knew I was lost. Uh, and that day I got saved, I knew Jesus saved me. Uh, what I did not realize, uh, I got the best life I could ever live. Uh, and heaven too. Uh, I got a peace that passes understanding. Uh, I got the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, hey, I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, I got a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, hey, what a blessing to be saved today. I can honestly say in being saved 48 years, I've never wanted for anything. He has supplied every need in Brother Tommy. He's also supplied a lot of my wants. Uh, what a blessing. Now, pray for Brother Tommy and Miss Christi Christina. They're not getting on a cruise, but they're going on vacation this week. Leave the Twinkies home. For those of you who don't know, he went to get on an airplane one of their last trips, tried to smuggle a backpack full of Twinkies, and they, they stole them all from him. Uh, confiscated him. He's the Twinkie monster. If you get on a cruise, you can have all the Twinkies you want. They probably got them on there, huh? What I'm telling you, the captain supplies every need. Mm. Can I say something else about the captain? I'm talking about the captain of the ship of Zion. He never sleeps. Isaiah 20, or, no, Psalms 121 verse 4 says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. I don't have to worry about the captain going to sleep at the wheel. Right. Right. Amen. Mm. He's always on watch and he's always wide awake. Huh? Can I say something else about the captain? This captain is a wonderful captain, but he also relies on his staff. Mm -hmm. He sure does. Uh, can I say, he could do everything, but he allows us to get in on some of it. He allows us to tell others about him. He allows us to show others the way. But I got to thinking about on this cruise I'm getting on next week, the captain relies on a staff and hospitality. From the moment we got on board to the moment we get off, there'll be somebody being nice to us. Somebody being kind to us. Somebody with a smile on their face. It relies on hospitality. Uh, can I say, our captain of the ship of Zion relies on hospitality. 
when folks visit a church, they ought to be made to feel welcome. They ought to see smiles. Uh, they ought to feel genuine warmth and gratitude that you came. What a blessing, huh? Now, I don't know how they do it. I've been on quite a few of these cruises. I'm kind of addicted to them. I never had a desire to be on one until Brother Rod and Miss Lynn took me on one. It's all your fault. You've cost me a lot of money. But I love you anyway. huh? But hey, that was my present for marrying them. They paid for me to go on the honeymoon. Now, that's kind of weird, but I got a cruise out of the deal. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, that's a deal. But listen, I don't know how they do it. But these cruise ships have ninjas that work on them. They do. You never see them. You'll leave your cabin. You might go down the hall about 20 feet and come back, and they've been in your room, got it all straightened up. It's neat as a pin, and you don't see them. They, they know when you're there, when you're not there, and they sneak around their ninjas, and they'll take your towels, and they'll make animals out of them. You come back and your towel looked like an elephant or a swan, and one time was a monkey with my sunglasses on it. I mean, they, they make these, they, they, and you don't want to use your towels then, so then you got to go and get more towels, and whoop, there's the ninjas, they got your towels. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's something, but that the hospitality is what makes your cruise good or bad. Can I say, there have been times I've been invited somewhere to preach. And walk in, nobody shake your hand, nobody smile at you, nobody care to listen to you while you're preaching. And you can't wait till the final amen and get back to Emmanuel. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but not only does he rely on his staff and hospitality, he also relies on his staff to hoist. Now on that cruise ship, they hoist an anchor. But can I say, the captain of the ship of Zion tells us to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh, listen, anybody in here subject to have a bad day, bad week, bad time, when they get to the house of God, they need somebody to help them. Somebody to help lift their burden. Somebody be good to them. Somebody be kind to them. He relies on staff to hoist, but he also relies on someone when he gets to the harbor. This is something I did not know till recently. See, these cruise ships, they go to the same places week after week after week after week. You'd think they'd have it all down. But what I did not know is while at sea, the captain's in charge. But when he comes into port, he's no longer in charge. When he gets to port, the harbor master of the port takes a little dinghy and he gets out to that big cruise ship and he has to bring the ship into port. And can I say, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost has been reeling us in. But when we get there, the Father's going to take over. And He's going to put us right where we need to be. Are you listening? Uh, oh, what a captain we have. He does a wonderful job. Well, there's coming a time when the Father's going to take over. Well, then, let me say this. I, I'll be done. The captain of the, the ship of Zion, you can mark her down. He's going to safely lead us home. I'm reminded in Acts 27 when Paul said, except you abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. They were wanting to jump off the ship, save their lives, and you're not going to, you're not going to be, be safe. Your life is going to end if you get off the ship. And can I say that ship got busted up, but they all arrived safely to shore. And can I say the old ship of Zion, she's, she's been bruised and battered, as the old song says. Uh, she's taken some hits throughout the years and throughout the ages. But can I say the precious cargo is going to arrive safely home. Uh, we're all going to make it home. Jesus has never lost a one, and he never will. I've said all that to say this this morning. Do you know the captain? Have you been saved by grace through faith? Have you truly given your heart to Jesus? Friend, I'd like to tell you you've got plenty of time, but I don't know how much time you got. 
the way this old world's went in the last little bit, I don't know how much time any of us got. But I do know one thing, the ship of Zion's going home. Are you on board? You can be. You've got to know the captain. Do you know him today? Oh, he loves you. He wants to save you, rescue you, because you're in the deep, about ready to perish. But he wants to rescue you. He's throwing you a lifeline this morning through this little simple message. He wants you to get on board. He wants to save you from your sins. Friend, if you're not saved, you ought to get saved today. Maybe you're here today and you're saved, but it's been a while since you told the captain he's doing a good job. Maybe it's been a while since you've thanked him. Maybe it's been a while since you've told him, Lord, every need's been supplied. Thank you. Hmm? Maybe it's been a while since you told him you loved him. Today'd be a good day for you to tell the captain how much you think of him, how wonderful he's been in your life. Maybe today you're saved, you know you're saved, but you're just under load. I've got good news. The captain can lift your load. Why don't you just bring it to him and lay it down, let him have it. Oh, friend, he'll replace it with something wonderful. So he'll replace it with some joy or some peace, some comfort. Why don't you give your load to the captain? He knows how to handle it, friend. But oh, so important today, if you don't know the Master, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, you ought to get saved today. The Bible says today's the day of salvation. You don't know if you have tomorrow. You don't even know if you've got tonight. I'd get saved today. Amen. Oh, friend, give your heart to Jesus. He loves you so much. He died for you. He allowed you to be here. He wants to save you. The sweet Holy Spirit speaking in your heart right now telling you you need to be saved. That's the captain telling you. You need to be saved. Don't die and go to hell. You don't have to. You can get on the ship of Zion. Why don't you give your life to Jesus? Say, preach, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible. We'll show you how to be saved. The important thing is you need know, you know when you need to be saved. And if you know you're, you're lost, you can get saved. All you got to do is take one step of faith and let the Lord Jesus change your life. Do you know the captain? If you're here today and you're not saved, why don't you come giving your life? There's some praying. I wonder, will you come today? Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless your holy name. Lord, I'm glad Rebecca made it to Isaac. And God, I'm glad the church is going to make it to Jesus. So, Father, I pray you'd help that one that may be here today or many that may be here that's not on board the old ship of Zion. I pray today would be the day that they'd make up their mind they're going to go with the servant. They're going to get on the ship. They're going to get saved by the grace of God. Help them to come give their life to Jesus. Lord, I pray for those that, Lord, are under load, that God, you just help them with their load. Lord, I pray for, oh, that one might be cold and indifferent on God. You'd touch their heart and help them. And then, God, I certainly pray you'd revive the saints of God for the glory of God. The ship of Zion ought to be loaded with folks pleading for sinners to get on board. Help us, Lord, to be revived, be what you'd have us to be. Be a part of your staff, making a difference in somebody else's life. Now, blessing this invitation, speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.